Sevilla is the heart and soul of Spain. You will find in Sevilla all that a traveler can hope for. Pedestrian shopping streets and quiet alleys, flower-scented gardens, an ancient palace and immense cathedral, hundreds of historic sites, 3,000 years of conflict and peace, thrilling evening entertainment, excellent museums, great food and drink, especially the tapas, and rewarding nearby attractions. The list goes on until you run out of time. Sevilla's city center is divided in various parts. There's Macarena in the north, El Arenal on the west side, the central shopping zone, and most exciting of all, Santa Cruz with the narrow pedestrian streets and lots of shopping and eating. There are other districts or barrio in the city. After all, Sevilla is the fourth largest city in Spain with a metropolitan population of about 1.5 million. But for the visitor, that central area is your main destination. Sevilla's historic center is quite large, about a mile wide by a mile and a half long, and riddled with countless little alleys and important landmarks. You can discover it on foot if you are selective and seek out the particular attractions that most appeal to your interests. We suggest here an organized plan for doing just that, but it's sometimes better to push the plan aside and just wander. Certain neighborhoods, especially Santa Cruz, are perfect for the aimless stroll and the downtown pedestrian zone of Sevilla. We'll show you more of the downtown shopping area later in the program, but for now we're looking at the old town. More visitors flock to Spain than to any other nation in the world except France because it has so many wonderful places to enjoy. Among its many attractions, the golden city of Sevilla in the heart of southern Spain in Andalusia ranks as one of the country's top destinations for the sheer beauty and pleasure it offers. 3,000 years of civilization produced a rich concentration of historic landmarks and fascinating neighborhoods which can be easily explored on foot in the city center. Here we show a big walking route. It's a couple of miles that'll take you right through the center, including the shopping areas, Cathedral, Alcazar, and the old quarter of Santa Cruz, where we're going to focus our attention for this segment. So let's take a little walking tour in Santa Cruz. An excellent central location to start the first walking tour is between the Cathedral and Alcazar Palace in the Plaza del Triunfo. Many of the town's main attractions can be easily reached from this central space, making it convenient for you to pick a direction, any direction, and go. But with such an abundance of choices, it can be a little tricky to decide where best to begin. Which way to turn depends on your priorities and the time of day, but no matter, walking is always the best way to see a place, and especially when it's so pedestrian friendly like Sevilla, with so many lanes that are dedicated just to the pedestrian, and other narrow lanes where you have very little traffic. You always want to use that walker's rule of thumb that when you get to an intersection, look around and see which way looks most interesting. That's if you have the time to wander and it can lead you from one place to the next with great satisfaction. On the other hand, if you're in a hurry, you wanna follow a little bit more of a specific plan and stick to it and follow your map. Now be advised, many of these little streets in Santa Cruz and the little plazas have been discovered by the tourists. So depending on when you're here, the main lanes might get a little crowded, but there's always the lovely side lanes that you can find for a more peaceful and tranquil atmosphere. So just follow your nose when you're wandering around in Santa Cruz district and we'll give you some tips here on how to navigate and what to see. Most shops and churches close for siesta from about 1 p.m. until 4 p.m. So you might spend this time on a stroll and those quiet back streets of that picturesque district Santa Cruz. It was first created as the Jewish Quarter nearly 2,000 years ago. Begin at one of Sevilla's most 
picturesque and centrally located squares, the Plaza de la Virgen de los Reyes, surrounded by the cathedral, Archbishop's Palace, and Encarnacion Convent, with horse carriages patiently lined up along the edge and a monumental fountain in the center. It is possible to take a horse and buggy ride for an overview of the sights, with the driver telling you about the highlights as you pass by, or join a walking tour with a local escort. But you can very easily walk the streets of the old town on your own, as we suggest here, and enjoy the sights for yourself. This largely pedestrian barrio is a charming tangle of narrow, crooked lanes lined with beautiful homes from the 17th century, enhanced with delicate iron balconies, potted flowers, wooden shutters, and hidden courtyards. Among Europe's best neighborhoods for strolling, the main part of this warren is only about six blocks in each direction, enabling you to wander freely and discover it in a couple of hours. Santa Cruz is so magical you should return in the warm atmosphere of early evening to appreciate the soft lighting and settle into a quaint little tavern for dinner. Once is just not enough for a special district like this, which also has several small hotels that make ideal places to stay. Hidden courtyards, curved lanes, covered passages, and five-way intersections are some of the fun elements of this pedestrian puzzle of Santa Cruz, which you are now entering. It helps to have a map, which you might want to purchase in one of the souvenir shops. Get a big one if you can find it. Fortunately, all of the streets in the city are very well marked. Nearly every corner has got a street name up on the building, so you can easily see where you are and get your bearings. But it's also fun to just get lost and wander. The main thing is to enjoy each step and keep your eyes open to absorb the beauties all around. The short lane of Santa Marta, right next to the convent, has a delightful tiny plaza at the end, easily overlooked but worth a quick glimpse. Small pleasures often await down the out of the way alleys if we only take the... Of course you'll be getting hungry and tempted as you walk around passing these tapa bars. Sevilla is famous for the wonderful foods in the bars and Bodega Santa Cruz is one of the better ones. According to TripAdvisor, it's number 21 out of nearly 2,000 restaurants in Sevilla. It had, for example, 900 reviews, and 800 of those were either excellent or very good. So you can count on this Bodega Santa Cruz for a real atmospheric bite. You're gonna find these tuple bars that are very friendly places where everybody is talking to each other, to the bartender, and their protocol is simple. You just point to the food that you want, and it's very inexpensive, typically about two euro for a dish. And the beer or wine to wash it down is equally inexpensive and delicious. On the other hand, some of the more touristic restaurants in the Santa Cruz area might not be so good, so you've gotta be careful where you sit down to eat. Walking along, we continue our look at this fascinating neighborhood. Of course, TripAdvisor has lots of information about Sevilla with sightseeing tips and restaurants and hotels and such. And regarding this Santa Cruz district, they've actually got 2,500 comments and reviews with 95% of those either excellent or very good, ranking this neighborhood in the top five things to do in their list of 360 activities in Sevilla. To summarize what those comments say, as you might expect, similar to what we've said already, it's a maze of tangled lanes with plenty of restaurants of varying quality, including some very good ones if you are careful in your selection. And the shops are fun with decent prices, but geared mostly to the tourists. Shops selling traditional ceramics always seem to be a big hit with the travelers. Come back in the evening for a more quiet and alluring atmosphere like a film set, a dream for photographers and those who enjoy the views. Bars, bars, and more bars, most of them serving tapas. 
Barrio Santa Cruz is not only the primary tourist neighborhood of Sevilla, but also has a dramatic history as the former Jewish quarter of the medieval city. Santa Cruz became Sevilla's old Juderia, the Jewish quarter, when Ferdinand III of Castile conquered the city from Muslim rule in the mid-13th century. He concentrated the city's Jewish population at that time, which was second in size only to that of Toledo, into this one single neighborhood. And then in 1492, the Jews were expelled because of the Alhambra Decree, which evicted all the Jews from Spain. And so the neighborhood went downhill. In the 18th century, the neighborhood underwent a major process of urban renewal. And so a lot of the buildings that we see here today are from that time period, about two to 300 years ago. And in recent decades, it has been transformed into the tourist center that we see now. The Callejón del Aqua, an alley parallel to the city walls, was once the route along which water was brought to the Royal Alcazar of Sevilla. It's inevitable that you will run into some lovely street musicians as you walk around. Scattered throughout this neighborhood are several little plazas, including the Plaza de los Venerables, which is full of bars and restaurants. The Plaza de Santa Cruz, the namesake of the neighborhood, once the site of the Iglesia de Santa Cruz, the Church of the Holy Cross, constructed over the ruins of a synagogue and incorporated the floor of that synagogue. Well, during the Napoleonic Wars, the church was demolished and the floor remained as the site of the present plaza. The Murillo Gardens are right next to Santa Cruz and there are several other small garden plazas within this historic area. When you see all the kids getting out of school, walking home with their parents, you realize that Santa Cruz is also a residential area. It's not just for tourists. Hey, hola. <laughs> Many of the upper floors are apartments for locals. And there are some inexpensive backpacker hotels tucked away. After so much walking, it's nice to sit down and relax. Now leaving the old barrio to see more of downtown. The center of Sevilla in Spain is one of the typically great European urban neighborhoods with a mix of residential and shopping, pedestrian lanes, neighborhood plazas, just a real people friendly place. We are going to take you through it with several walks pointing out some of the major plazas and the lovely pedestrian lanes. Starting out at Plaza Nueva, the most popular place in town. This central area with the plaza and the streets leading to it is really the heart and the center of town. Notice the broad street that is for pedestrians, bicycles, no cars allowed. Sevilla has a recently installed modern tram system that really is a great way to move people around. It's so easy for the tram to come right through the center of town this way. It's not disrupting the urban fabric in any way. It comes along nice and slowly in this central area with pedestrians and bicyclists sharing the space. And then it moves faster when it's out on the edge of town, bringing people to the suburbs and points beyond much less expensive than constructing a subway and much less disruptive than building an elevated train through the center of town. The street level tram is an ideal example of urban transportation at its best. Very easy to get on the tram. It's like getting on a bus. It's right at street level. This neighborhood along Constitution Avenue has been entirely transformed by the tram service because now there's no cars going by, you don't have that exhaust fumes and noise, and so there's a lot more room for people throughout. You've got the sidewalk restaurants, you've got people walking, strolling along, lounging, people watching, 
And this street is a major one that connects the cathedral with the city hall square and then beyond right into the pedestrian shopping zone where we'll be taking you next. Plaza Nueva is just one block over from the main pedestrian lane of town, which leads right into the shopping district. Calle Siarpes, lined with the best shopping and liveliest atmosphere, especially in the late afternoon when the locals are out enjoying their traditional stroll. Siarpes means Street of the Serpent, perhaps due to its wiggly route and extreme length. It goes for nearly a mile. And it's not just the one street, it's an entire shopping zone, a fabric of side lanes and parallel streets that make for the most important shopping area of the city. There are a lot of beautiful old buildings here with tiles on the walls in that typical Andalusian style. So you want to be sure to look up a couple of floors to see the roof lines and the tiles up above and windows and balconies maybe some flower pots as you're walking along on these main shopping streets. The shops are open in the morning from 10 till 2 p.m. and then they close for siesta in that typical Spanish style and reopen again at 3 p.m. and stay open usually till 10 p.m. Anchoring the north end of this retail network at Plaza Duque de la Victoria is the city's largest department store, El Corte Inglés open throughout the afternoon. No siesta for the department stores. Occupying a city block with a beautiful plaza and fountain out front, they claim to have a half a million items for sale. Of course, the advantage of that department store is you can find everything under the one roof. Walk in the one door and you're bound to find almost everything for sale in the city. Although it's kind of more fun to go poke around in the little boutiques along the shopping lanes. Like many other European cities lately, Sevilla has been converting more and more of its downtown streets into pedestrian malls. Ironically, shop merchants throughout Europe resisted this kind of transformation from automobile access to pedestrian zone, thinking that it would kill their business because everybody was driving up to the shop. But they quickly realized that it was great for business. Many, many more people can walk by the shop than could ever drive by it previously. So it's been a big victory all around. The public especially has benefited from this new quality of urban life. The central zone is a big automobile free shopping mall and will be the most important part of town for many visitors. Two parallel shopping streets of Cuna and Tetuan flank Sierpes connected by a pedestrian network of little side streets with no automobiles allowed. It's a good thing that these two parallel lanes and other cross lanes have developed because otherwise Sierpes would just be too crowded. As it is, on a busy day, you will be rubbing shoulders with quite a few locals. And it gets most busy on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, after 5 p.m. That's really when it's out in all its glory. Typical of uh, most European cities, there are not many big shopping malls out on the outskirts in the suburbs of the city. And therefore, the central part of Sevilla, here in the pedestrian zone, is still the main place where people gather for shopping, eating, people watching, and just taking a walk. The city has put fabric canopies over many of these pedestrian lanes to shelter people from the sun. It does get kind of hot from May through September, but the canopies really help a lot by providing shade. San Eloy is another one of those pedestrian shopping streets that's perpendicular to Sierpes. Great neighborhood, and there's some little garden plazas that you can sit down and take a break at. Here's an example of one of the finest things in life, standing around with your friends, having a drink, having a conversation, and a beautiful outdoor plaza. We're in Plaza del Salvador, and we'll come back here in a little while in the evening to show you when it's really jumping. Notice they have stand-up tables that encourage energetic conversation and mingling with your friends. And now we're just going to wander a little bit, just kind of meander around, take a left, take a right, go down some attractive alleys, and we soon find ourselves at a magical little spot. 
Plaza San Lorenzo. This plaza is not really on any guidebooks as an important destination site that you must see, but it's just such a wonderful slice of life of Sevilla that we're gonna spend some time here hanging out, especially now late in the afternoon. It's about five o'clock, going on six o'clock. It's twilight time and the locals are out in force. This is an outdoor living room. You see the people are just sitting at the cafes. The kids are all around playing up a storm, having a great time with each other. There's a church on one side. There's cafes, there's pastry shops, there's restaurants and bars and snack bars and convenience stores. And then the apartments are all around within a few blocks. This is one of the great joys of city life where you have that urban density where enough people are living in a certain neighborhood that you can walk out, walk down to the corner plaza, the neighborhood plaza, see your friends, spend some time, do a little shopping, and then walk back home again. This is really strictly for the locals. And of course, throughout Sevilla, you have a number of these neighborhood centers, these little plazas. This is happening all over town. In the Middle Ages, Plaza del Salvador had been the Muslims' major square with the big mosque and the marketplace. It was replaced by Sevilla's second largest church and what is today one of the liveliest plazas in town, filled with young people in the evening having a great time. This plaza is right next to the major university in Sevilla and at night it really becomes a lively social gathering area. It's really a wonderful spot for the young people to get together. They can stand up and have a drink out in the public square. They can go into the restaurants or cafes if they like or just sit around the edges on the steps of the church and enjoy the scene. It's like an ongoing party every night. Europe really excels at these places for people to gather, public places in the middle of town. It's a very casual, safe and friendly environment. Great place to meet somebody, great place to mingle. There's really nothing much like it in most American cities, but this is something really special to Europe and in particular to Spain and right here in the heart of Sevilla. It's really a marvelous scene, and you're welcome to join in. Many of the young people speak English pretty well, and if you'd like to join a conversation, well, go right ahead and see what you can contribute. Everybody will be the better for it. Even though it seems like Spaniards stay up all night, they keep very late hours, the travelers gotta get some rest. And what better way to do that than in the fine hotel like the Melia Gran Colón, a five-star property of that big Spanish chain Melia, and they put on a typical large Spanish buffet breakfast. This is a great way to build up some energy for another big day. Breakfast is usually included with the price of your hotel room in Spain and generally throughout Europe. So that's all very convenient. You go right downstairs, have breakfast, back up to your room, get ready for the day. And in our case, we're traveling with a small group, so we have a chance to talk a little and swap some tales about what happened yesterday. The hotel is nicely located in the center of the downtown commercial area, just a few blocks south of Corte Inglés, the big department store. And it's a charming little neighborhood. There's narrow streets, there's sidewalk cafes nearby, and puts us in good position for starting another walking tour of Sevilla. This morning, we'll take a stroll through more of the pedestrian shopping streets and over to a big plaza, Alameda de Hercules, and then on to have a look at the old wall that still surrounds part of the city. Once again, into the lovely pedestrian zone in central Sevilla, this time, along Amor de Dios, a narrow lane with shops that have a nice variety of goods. And the street is really an extension of Sierpes, the main pedestrian lane that goes through the heart of town. 
This is a neighborhood that we're entering now that 20 years ago was really not such a desirable part of town, but there's been a lot of efforts now to clean it up and make it a very pedestrian friendly region. Walk a few blocks west to Alameda de Hercules, a narrow tree shaded park that has recently bounced back from being a seedy red light district to becoming one of the trendy hot spots of town with ultra hip boutiques and yuppie cafes. You'll see families out here enjoying their time together in the open air and notice the landscaping and the paving, the lovely contours that they've put into the paved brick plaza. It really breaks up this major space and makes it far more interesting experience. You'll see there's just a narrow lane for automobiles to go through here so there is some access for motor vehicles, but not much. This is a place for people, for pedestrians, for bicycles. Sevilla is a major bicycling town. There's a large number of dedicated bikeways exclusive for the bicycles. They also have one of these very popular bicycle rental systems that you're finding more and more now throughout Europe. It is a garden plaza that was built in 1574, which makes it, according to Wikipedia, the oldest public garden in Spain and in Europe. This beautiful plaza that we see today has a very long history, starting out as a riverbed, then a swamp, and then reclaimed as a upper-class gathering place, falling later into disrepute as a spot for drugs and whores, and now Reborn is one of the finest and safest friendly gathering places in town. Sometimes it would get so flooded that people crossed the square on boats back in the 16th and 17th centuries. And then public redevelopment funded by the city council totally renewed La Alameda between 2006 and 2008. The road traffic was limited and a number of kiosks, benches and fountains were installed. And now it's one of the main social gathering centers and nightlife hotspots of the city. Quite naturally, there's been a positive spillover effect into the nearby blocks, which have been transformed into a very desirable place to live. There's shops, neighborhood restaurants, bars and cafes, and they're really taking very good care of these old buildings here. The city is showing a lot of pride in the historic renovations that have been happening throughout. We've reached the west end of the old town and even here you'll find some more pedestrian lanes. And then there's a mix of traffic. There are some residential streets here with some affordable apartments right within the old town. It's a very desirable neighborhood in which to live. You've got the urban conveniences and yet it's rather quiet and affordable. And finally, we reach the ancient wall and the Macarena Gate. This is part of a fortification that at one time went around the entire old town. The origins ultimately went back to Roman days and it was built up over the Gothic and Islamic periods in Castilian and it survived right up through the 19th century with the Macarena to Cordoba Gate section beautifully restored. We have got more movies about Sevilla and other parts of Spain on our YouTube channel, where you'll also find a thousand movies about Europe and some other parts of the world. If you're enjoying the program, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you'll be notified about all of the new movies that we're regularly uploading. How about a thumbs up? And comments are always welcome down below.